How's it going everyone? And these are five things nobody else will tell you. So when you're going to buy a new motorcycle at a dealership, just understand these salespeople are salespeople. They're there to sell you something. That is their whole job in life is to sell you a motorcycle. They may take the time to get to know you and blah, 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 but just be honest. Do they want to spend four hours with you talking to you about everything in the world and then maybe sell one bike or if they could talk to 10 people and sell five bikes, what would they rather do? Their job is not to be your best friend. Their job is to sell you something. So that leads me to point number one. Be honest with yourself before you ever go to a dealership. What can you actually afford? What is your budget? And stick to that. If they're not willing to give you the price you want, leave and ask about the service. How much does the service cost? How much does the oil change cost at this place? Um, these are the parts I want. Can you order them for me? How much will they cost? Can you give me some kind of deal? 10% off of a new buyer. Can you give me a service discount or whatever else it is? But just be honest with your budget before you ever walk in there and think about it before you walk in the dealership so you don't get swindled into buying something that's way too big or powerful or expensive than what you actually want. Number two, do your damn research before you ever get to the dealership. Oh my gosh, tell people like, look, I want ABS, I want a fuel gauge, I don't want to guess how much fuel's in the gas tank, I want a gear indicator, I want to know what gear I'm in, I want a windshield, and I want the capability of luggage. Say you want all those things on a bike. Go up to the salesperson, you walk into the dealership, hey man, show me all the bikes that have these qualities. I, I did a bunch of research online. I think these four bikes have pretty much what I want. Do you have any of these four bikes here? Or is there another bike that has all of these qualities, non-negotiable in this dealership? Um, we don't have any bikes like that that meet all your criteria. Thanks, walk out the door. Know what you want before you ever get there so you're not wasting everybody's time. So when I was teaching, this is number three. So when I was teaching for um, the motorcycle classes, the beginner through the advanced level stuff. There's been so many times, especially military, I go there and students show up on their own bikes. I'm like, man, that's a brand new bike. You must really love it. When did you get it? A couple weeks ago, blah, blah, blah. Why'd you get this bike? Do you really want this 1,000cc sport bike? Oh, not really. I was looking for a 600, but the sales guy said, oh, it's a one it's a one day only special APR and there's no other way I could get this deal. So I bought the bike and now I realize it's a lot of bike. It's a lot of money. The insurance, eh, I, I kind of didn't want it. So don't get swindled. They're there to sell you something. They oftentimes don't have your best interest at heart. They don't know who you are, right? They just want to sell you a bike. Number four, keep in mind, so I've, out of all the motorcycles and cars I have bought, sold, traded in over the last 20 years, I could open up my own damn dealership. Just believe me when I say the price is always negotiable. Either a brand new bike or a pre-owned bike that's at the dealership, the price is negotiable. So get the price you want or leave. Next, once you actually find the bike you want, say you want this bike with these features, this color, and you find it, what's the out-the-door price after everything I want? Gap, not gap, service, blah, 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 whatever it is, out-the-door price. Can you do it? How much is the price? If it's more than what you want to pay, tell them that. This is what I want to pay no matter what. You can't beat it. Um, you can't, can you give me this price? No, I can't. There's no way I could do it. Okay, see ya. Walk out the door. Go to a different dealership. Last thing to consider. So if you're buying a used bike from a private seller, highly recommend get a hold of the person and tell them like, look, my motorcycle mechanic is going to come with me and he wants to do a cold startup. Don't start the bike before we get there. We're going to ask him a bunch of questions and we both want to do a test drive. Is this okay? And if they have nothing to hide or there's nothing wrong with that, like, sure, come on over. I'll see you guys when you get here, right? So when you go there, do the cold startup, do the test ride, ask to see any paperwork they got of the bike, that they, what service do they do to the bike, when do they do it, who do they do it, do they have any receipts of all this stuff, look at the chain, look at the sprockets, any dents, scratches, aftermarket parts, do they have the original parts, has it ever been dropped, by who, what was the circumstances, do they have the title, is it clean? Look at the suspension setup, do you ever change the oil in the suspension? There's oil in the suspension, did you even know that? Who adjusted it? Are they, when did they do that? What, how do they adjust the suspension to for the person's weight? How much does that person weigh? Do they not adjust the suspension whatsoever, right? Look at the tires. If the tires are four years old and there's dry rod and bald spots, whatever else, that's a way to negotiate the price too because you have to buy brand new tires immediately. Like, hey, take off another $500. The tires are six years old and there's dry rot cracks inside the tread. I need to get new tires, right? So get the tires. And then look at the person's, everything. Look at their house, look at their personal hygiene, look at their garage. If everything is sloppy, dirty, out of place, like this probably doesn't, this dude doesn't even take care of himself, let alone this motorcycle. It's just a red flag. But if you go to the place and it's like perfectly clean, the bike is really clean and updated, the guy has all the paperwork available to and everything like that, you could probably trust it's probably a pretty good damn deal, right? So here's a little scenario to think about. So rider A, 50 year old guy, 20,000 miles on a bike in one year, he commutes back and forth to work. He likes to go on a little bit long distance trip with his friends. Um, he has all of his riding gear. The bike is perfectly clean. The garage is really organized. That's rider A. Rider B, 20 year old kid, same bike, same mileage in the same amount of time. It's his first bike. The bike is filthy. He rides to work and he rides on the weekends with his buddies. 
and he doesn't have any gear. Which rider would you, which person would you take seriously to buy that same exact bike with the same exact miles from and the same exact time, rider A or rider B? So just understand um, it matters. So everything is a reflection of you. If you can't take care of yourself or what you have or everything else, it's a good indication you don't take care of other things. So, and of course, this is all generalities. I've met some dealers, um, salespeople that really got to know me and I go ride with them every now and then. I'm friends with them and they're really, really good people, right? They're not just trying to sell you something. So not everybody's like that. But I've also met people like the people who sold me my very first bike. I didn't want to get a thousand cc sport bike, but that's exactly what I left the dealership with because I got talked into buying this because they said things that sounded good to me at the time. Like, oh, don't get a 600, you'll be bored. You'll want more power. Just take it easy, put it in C riding mode. Like that'll last five seconds. You're gonna go into A right away. You just want the power. And it was just bad. And I almost killed myself a year later on that damn bike because it was way too heavy, way too powerful. And I should have never been on it. Um, so it's something to think about. And the last thing, if you go to your bank and get a cashier's check, like, look, how much I want to get a loan for this much money. And if you get the loan, you get the cashier's check, you go to the dealership. And once everything comes down to it, like, look, I have this much in the cashier's check. I'll give it to you today right now if you'll give me the bike for this much money. Oh, you know, we're going to... We can't give it to you for that. So I have the cashier's check for 10 grand. I can't go any lower than $12,000 for the bike or whatever it is. Okay, leave. Go to a different dealership. Find the bike you want, pay what you want, and uh, don't be swindled into buying something too big, too powerful, or lacks features that you want. I want a bike with ABS, gear indicator, fuel gauge, no matter what. You cannot convince me otherwise. No matter what, those three things are a must. And if they don't have the bike or the features that you want, don't buy it. Don't be in such a rush to buy it. Just do your research, take your time, and go look. So out of all the bikes and trucks and everything else I've sold in the last probably 20 years, um, there's a bunch of things that I've learned through all this different stuff and that's what this video is about. And if, I'm just gonna reemphasize the main thing, no matter what the price of a new bike or a used pre-owned bike that's at the dealership, that price is negotiable. I promise you it is. If they say that I can't do anything lower, maybe they can't or maybe they're just not willing to, but um, when you walk out the door, you have the power to do that. So walk out the door and maybe they'll call you back in a week and be like, hey, we have a special deal going on. I could give you the price you want, but walk out the door if you don't get the price you want. Don't buy something you are not able to afford. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps.